Hi Landon Road Leopards, it's Mrs. Philman with another tutorial or learn to draw that we did during Zoom. So, if you are an orange day artist, a yellow day artist, or a blue day artist, you learn to draw a peacock in your Zoom. If you missed it, here's what you missed, but pay attention. The second, third, and fourth graders learn to draw the first type of peacock I will show you. The kindergarten and first grade artists learn to draw the second type. When you're finished, just submit a picture, just like we always do in Canvas, whether you're 100% virtual all the time, or you've been face-to-face -face with me. That way I know that you know how to draw the national bird of India. So I'm gonna do that slick trick where I change the camera direction and where I change to a drawing screen. It takes a moment of adjustment and if it looks like there's an earthquake, I apologize. I know that this camera gets a little bit shaky when I turn it. So here with my paints kind of scooted up because I don't need them quite yet. I'm gonna draw the first type of peacock that my second, third, and fourth graders draw. You can see I've got my sketchbook that I gave every artist, and I've got my paints ready that I also gave every artist. Don't forget, if you don't have these items for some reason, please make sure that you get a piece of paper and something with which to color. Crayons, colored pencils, or markers will be fine if you can't find your paints, if you've lost them, or they're at a different location than where you happen to be working. So to start off our National Bird of India, we're gonna draw what looks like Mickey Mouse's ears, but they touch. We know Mickey's ears don't. After we draw this, and if I'm going too fast, don't forget, you can always push pause or you can start the video over. After we have done this, we're going to make an oval that sort of comes off of these eyeballs. From the sides, we're gonna draw what looks sort of like a motorcycle helmet on top of these eyeballs. We're gonna give our peacock a beak so that he can smell and talk and maybe eat some lunch. We're gonna add some eyeballs so he can really see Mine's kind of looking off to the right a little bit. And next, we're gonna add what looks like parentheses, only backwards. And I bet you've already figured out we're gonna add one here too. We're also going to include some feathers that usually end up layered on the peacock's chest and tummy. They look a little like ocean waves. Now, of course, this poor peacock needs some thighs for legs at the top and feet and legs at the bottom. Next comes the all-important hairdo. Peacocks have three funny feathers that come up and curl and overlap a little and look like funny hair. The last and final touch is what takes the longest. A peacock's tail is its pride and joy. They also have something special within their feathers called a feather eye. It's not really an eyeball in the peacock's feathers, but the way the feathers are colored, it looks like there's an eye at the end. So at the end of each peacock feather, second, third, and fourth grade artists, I'm gonna draw a feather eye, and so on, and so on, until this peacock's tail is full. When I paint, ooh, I'm sorry, I got a little bit wild with my pencil. That was gonna be one very chunky feather, a little too fat for my taste, and not as even as I would like it to be with the rest of the feathers I'm creating. When it's time to paint, peacocks are 
cool colored. That means the cool temperature colors, blue, green, and purple. I usually paint the peacock's body blue first. I don't paint his eyeballs blue or the whites of his eyes, but I do paint his body and his head blue. And don't forget the tops of his legs, or if you leave them white, it'll look like he has frostbite. When you're using watercolor, you use water to get your paint activated, and then you use more paint if you want brighter color. You use more water if you want lighter color. You do not ever use your brush as though it were a shovel, it's a brush. If you need more color, you brush your brush across your paint and you add more paint. You never dig in your paint with your brush. Make sure you've got some paper towel handy if you have dribble drops you don't like. For instance, I just dripped some blue here. I may not mind it, but I also might not want it there. Because we use blue to create purple and green, it doesn't matter if our green touches our blue a little bit. If we're using green to start our peacock tails, and I usually create each tail feather the opposite way of the last, so I'm gonna skip one because it'll be purple later. And if a little blue gets in my green, it's okay. We can't make green without blue anyway. There's already blue in green. <laughs> Won't hurt a single thing. When you are all done, take a quick picture of your peacock and submit it to lesson 10.5. I know that sounds silly, but I'm sneaking a lesson in between other lessons that I had already planned. Since virtual learning was a surprise, we have a surprise lesson called 10.5. Now my purple is not the greatest, so I'm gonna add a little blue to it. And that means your purple might not be the greatest either. You may wanna mix some red and some blue to get a better purple. You can do that in the lid of your paint case is actually a mixing tray. Our purple's really very gray. So I'm gonna mix some red and some of my purple, maybe a bit of my blue to get just a little bit better purple. This is a great chance to learn some color mixing or relearn it if you already know how to make purple. That's gonna look a bit better, at least for my taste. The purple that I had was just a little too gray. And that happens sometimes. It depends on the paint company. While this is drying, I can think about if I would like yellow or orange for my beak or feet or both. Once this is dry, I can paint my orange or yellow. Don't paint it until blue, green, and purple are dry. You will get it very badly blended and it will run together and make the most awful type of brown. So the painting directions are the same for you younger artists. And I wanna show you a quick paper towel trick if you need another page of your sketchbook. So K and one artists, my kindergarten and first grade fine artists, you're gonna use your hand and I'm going to turn two pages so that I can use my hand this way to make a peacock. My hand is too big for one sketchbook page. Yours is probably just fine. After you have traced your hand, and believe me, I know this is probably fairly light, you're gonna need to add a smile where your wrist was so that we can finish your hand print. You're gonna add those feather eyes all the way down what used to be your fingers because those are now the peacock's tail feathers. And no, you don't have to draw them as speedy as I do. I'm trying to be a little quicker for the video so it's not too long. I added a beak and an eyeball to what used to be my thumb because my peacock is looking up a little bit. I definitely want his cool hairdo. 
And then I don't want him to be without feathers for wings. And I might make a couple layers of those. He definitely needs some thighs for his upper legs, his lower stick legs, and then he needs some feet. Same painting rules as you already saw. Blue, green, and purple. Use those until you're done and until they're dry. Don't try any yellow or orange on your beak and feet until your cool colors, the same colors as cool water, are dry. When you're done, kindergarten and first grade artists, you submit to Canvas as well in lesson 10.5.